My name's Robin McDermott. I'm a public health doctor and for 25 years I've been working in rural and remote areas in primary health care and particularly looking at the health transition and the fact that now we're faced with a big health gap between people living in remote areas and everybody else, Indigenous people and everybody else, and the big part of that health gap is chronic disease. About 10 years ago in Queensland in, and as a part of the Northern Territory intervention, um, there were some new policies introduced into communities with respect to controlling the supply of alcohol into these communities in order to reduce some of the consequences. A lot of violence, a lot of abuse of women and children, a lot of disruption, um, children not going to school, not getting fed properly, for example. So there was no question that there was literally a public health emergency fuelled by alcohol, particularly in some of the remote communities in the Northern Territory and in Queensland. One of the projects that we were, we were doing as a part of our CRE was looking at the impact of some of these uh, plans over the last 10 years, particularly asking people in the communities what their experience of it was, and to try and capture some of the unintended consequences of that. And so um, uh, Alan Clough, who's one of our CRE investigators, undertook extensive community consultation about this and interviewed over a thousand people in four of the North Queensland communities, including local government uh, members and uh, policy people. And it found that some of the unintended consequences were that there was criminalisation um, of uh, offences which for you and I living in Canberra, Sydney, Brisbane perhaps wouldn't, come, wouldn't be criminal offences. And that had the downstream impact of making it um, difficult for these people subsequently to get employment in the public sector, for example, or in local government be because they had a record. The other thing uh, that people were saying was that if you just look at the supply side uh, restriction and you don't look at the demand side reduction, then you get a, you get a very much unbalanced um, sense of what works. And certainly the alcohol management plans were very much focused just on the supply side reduction and not on um, supporting communities to either for rehabilitation or for prevention in the first place. These issues are very important and now they're feeding into discussions with local government about where to next in terms of policies for these communities. So I think that's been an um, extremely interesting and valuable journey not just for the communities, but for local government. What it means is that uh, there's no simple solutions to this and it, it's, it's an iterative process and we must look for unintended consequences of uh, policies that, that have been made um, in a particular context in the past.